Stranger Things 4, Episode 9. Don't get interrupted. Yes, yes, yes! <laughs> Finally, four seasons we've been waiting for this. <laughs> are they gonna have sex? Are they? Oh, I think they are. <laughs> Hopper looks like back then. <laughs> Finally, four oh seasons. I knew that was common. <laughs> I'm happy now. Aww. Okay, in this episode, Nancy, Max, Steve, Robin, Eddie are all sick and tired of that creepy ass child grooming virgin asshole Vecna and his shit. So they band together and find a way to they plan they plan to get into the upside down and kill that creep once and for all. As determined as they are, <coughs> and there's quite a good chance they actually had of taking them down, they're gonna need help. Specifically Max. This episode was probably the best one out of the entire season. That one there. I liked episode eight as well, Papa and episode four, but this was this one here I think absolutely killed it. I wonder Whenever they use running up that hill by Kate Bush, you know, just as soon as they take down Vecna, I wonder was that the original plan to use that song? You know, or did they have a different soundtrack in place originally and then whenever they found that that song took off from episode 4, they thought, hey, let's put him running up that hill, I think it works better, it's gone popular, Kate Bush will love it, the fans will love it. I don't know, was it the original idea to use running up that hill in, in the final, you know, Episode. I, don't know, I haven't looked into it yet, but I just thought it was interesting to point that out. Eleven, Mike, that weird guy with the black hair, I don't know his name, I forgot. And all. <coughs> they go to uh, a pizza place and they get like a salt bath made for Eleven so that she can go into the void and assist Max and the other guys because she realizes that I think by the time they get to Hawkins, you know, they'll all be dead or be too late. So. That's her best chance of assisting them there and then where she's already at. Um, pineapple on pizza. Uh, pineapple should be on pizza. It should be. Yes, that's the way it is. I mean, <coughs> this whole joke meme about pineapple not being on pizza. Look, people eat crisp sandwiches and enjoy it. I don't mind the odd cheese and onion sandwiches. Fuck, I've actually had Nutella and McCoy's beef crisps in a sandwich. Try that, by the way. <coughs> Try that, by the way, if you haven't already. And like a pregnant woman, whenever she has her cravings, whenever Vecna takes you and your eyes are grey and all, you're you're basically in his world. You're not necessarily in the upside down, but you're basically like in some other dimension, I think, in your own head. I don't know. And Eleven was able to enter that dimension uh, after Vecna had chased her all around with a. He was basically following her, tormenting her. And he had Billy coming after, you know, which I thought was class. They wrote a scope the scene from season three with Billy inside the sauna and put it in the season four. And it's almost like they reshot it. I'm pretty damn well sure that was wrote scope and it worked so well. Perfect. Smart. And Max basically just gave herself up and was like, you know, in order to distract Vecna and give the guys, the rest of the group, another chance of just killing him, uh, she would have him go after her like he did in episode 4 and <coughs> as he's chasing her she's just trying to find a way out to buy them time and she tries an experiment where if she thinks of a positive memory she might be able to enter it and she does. It was the ball that they had in season 2 and just walking around there music's playing and Eleven's trying to find Max and she ends up entering one of Max's early memories from childhood and through there she's able to enter the memory that she's currently in. Uh, Vecna shows up first and uh, you know just sh shoves her all around the room with his telekinetic powers and then Eleven jumps in and manages to save her at the last minute and then Vecna gets the upper hand because this is where Martin Brett was right he is a lot more powerful than what he was you know, years ago and he's able to restrain both Eleven and Max and at this point he actually tries to uh, 
kill Max again as he did tried to do before. So Eleven, I don't know why Eleven didn't use her powers sooner. You know, she gets motivation from Mike uh, to basically get up off her ass and fight this bastard. And um, at this point, uh, Vecna has uh, <coughs> he starts breaking Max's arms and legs, and I'm pretty sure everybody was screaming. I wasn't. I was just like, oh my god, they're actually gonna kill her off this time. Holy shit! And I was like, please don't. You know, season four, we all started to like Max more. Not that we didn't like her before, but season four, they gave him, they gave her more screen time, more character development, and certainly more relatable. But for other people, you know, especially if Ginger, if you Ginger her, you know, you're gonna find her more relatable. Yeah. That's what TV shows tend to do. They kill off, they get, they build up a character's arc to the point where you fall in love with them and you appreciate them more, and then they kill them off. But in this case, they didn't kill Max off. They just have her where. She's almost like in a coma or something. So Eleven does take down Vecna and that whole sequence is where it just shows, you know, Jim Hopper taking down the Demogorgon and the music being played. And then it shows Robin, Steve and Nancy as they throw like uh, improvised mod of cocktails at Vecna and he just goes up in flames. And as he's walking towards him, Nancy has a shotgun, long shotgun, long barrel shotgun, and just starts pumping rounds into them. And all the fact that Teddy goes off, off, falling off, whether they'll go back or not, I don't know, probably will. And then he just falls out the window, pretty much dead. But it looks like he may have regenerative healing powers, where you shoot him or stab him, it'll heal up, you know, kind of like what Wolverine had in the X-Men. I love how the group stayed like a caravan, you know, like a camper van. Still, the group still the camper van and basically make off with it. Eddie, uh, basically, um, as he, him and Dustin are on the upside down, he's trying to distract all of the um, the birds, the demo bats actually, so that the, uh, Nancy, Rob and Steve can infiltrate the attic where Vecna is and kill him. So <coughs> it just means that, you know, he won't know, he won't see that coming. He'd be like, oh, those kids are stupid enough to come back into here. Um, I'm pretty sure the Demogorgons and the Demogorgons will take care of them, idiots, and not realise that's part of the plan, because he'll be at his most vulnerable. Smart thinking. And as Eddie is, uh, gets jumped on the bicycle and cycles away, him and uh, Dustin manage to get back into, the, back into this reality, and then Eddie's like, you know, he cuts the, the rope and goes back into the upside down, because he doesn't want Dustin to get injured, and then he just fights off all the bats as best as he can, you know, to buy the group as much time as they need. And Dustin manages to make his way back into the upside down. I think he breaks his ankle or his foot in doing so because he fell, and ugh, you know, he has no rope to hold on to. And by the time he gets to Eddie, Eddie is like, gets killed. Uh, I, think, I don't know if it was Eddie's throat slashed or was he just bitten most of the time. But there's fan theories out there that um, Eddie um, technically isn't dead, that he'll come back as some kind of vampire lieutenant for back in season 5. I think that's interesting, I'd like to see that there. You know, he was, even though he's in one season, um, we've never seen her tell him before that there, he's still a big character, the fans love him, and I can totally see them bringing him back and he can be the villain in season 5. But um, even if he was defeated in fact, he was killed in season 5, whether Eddie will return to his normal self, we don't know. I don't know. Maybe he, uh, the real Eddie might be gone, and his body is just back to control you. So if they manage to come back, then like, Eddie probably will come back. I'd be surprised if they brought him back. It'd be cool if they brought him back. And then, as for Max, uh, this is what I don't get. Only her arms and legs were broken. There doesn't appear to have been any spinal injury there. Or maybe there was, but we just weren't showing it. And then she had her, she lost her eyesight. Bear in mind, whenever Eleven was fighting Vecna and she managed to beat him the first time around, blood came out of her eyes too. Her eyes didn't go grey. And Max's eyes went grey and blood came out. So the question is is Max permanently blind? Is she permanently paralysed? Anyway, <coughs> whenever. Eleven went into Max's mind to try and find her subconscious, but she couldn't. So either Max is brain dead or Vecna might have absorbed her. Because Dr. Martin Brenner did say whenever Vecna takes someone, he takes everything that they were and everything that they ever will be. So she's been absorbed by Vecna. Uh, because they managed to 
she did die, yeah, for one whole minute she did, was collected dead, and therefore Vecna would have absorbed her, and Eleven, using telekinesis, would have, you know, got her heart pumping again. Eleven doesn't have healing power, she doesn't, she just used that, and got her heart going, pump, 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 pump. So, her body's alive, but her mind, her soul, uh, is trapped inside of Vecna. There's theories going around that, uh, Max could end up helping Eleven, you know, uh, if Eleven was to reach out to uh, Vecna, she might be able to find Max that way, trapped inside her, trapped inside him, and might be able to find some way to take him down. Maybe not. Apparently, Max is going to have a bigger role in season five, so I'd say that just only well, has more fuel to it. That's all the more likely. Uh, <clears throat> Hopper and Joyce and Murray ended up going back to the prison camp that they just managed to escape from and they're attacking the demagogues and they want to attack like, the hive mind you know it, it's all done to make sure that Eleven has a chance of taking Vecna down after Vecna is taken down um, the clock the, the uh, grandfather clock starts chiming four times you know four deaths four chimes and then there's like an earthquake it's like the ground of Hawkins like breaks open and it's all red and basically the upside down is starting to enter our reality where Demogorgons and Demobats I'd say could eventually make their way in and out so the upside down is now physically here uh, the final scene I loved it I was waiting for it all season and had to wait till the final episode to see it the reunion between Hopper and Eleven and she kept the door open three inches whenever she went into the room to, I think, get some stuff or whatever. And the door was kept open three inches. It might have been Joyce that told him to go and be there, to rendezvous with her, and just didn't say, yeah, Hopper's alive, he's coming too. And then Hopper just walks in through the door. Him and Eleven and Bruce and all that shite, which <coughs> is really good. And then they go outside, and then they see that there's like, like ashes or dust falling. And if you don't, Every Stranger Things fan will know that's from the upside down, so they make a way out to the field to see where this is coming from. So there's a cloud coming from the ground, from the upside down, and all of the ashes are coming out, pouring all over Hawkins. So Vecna can basically, whenever he's healed up, step out of the upside down into our world, into Hawkins, and just cause havoc. So this will be interesting to see where season 5 is going to go. We may have to wait another two to three years for this here because the Duffer Brothers like to take their time. I prefer they take their time. You know, I'd rather have uh, quality, not quantity. I like The Walking Dead, which shows a freaking eight episodes out twice a year. You know, at least for Stranger Things, you have to wait two years and you get like nine, ten solid, decent episodes that are not filler. I like The Walking Dead. I would go as far as to say that season four was pretty much better than season three. You know, it, it's. It was. I wouldn't say it was as good as season one. I wouldn't. Know, I wouldn't say it was better than season one. But I'd say it was near enough. Near enough, just as good as it. I'll never beat season one. But season four was definitely. It definitely did make up for season three. It really did. <clears throat> just wish we had to see more of Hopper. Like bring back the badass Hopper that we all know and love. Come on, please do that. I'm kind. Of, I'm kind of glad that you know the season's over because if you're trying to review these episodes to stay on top of them. Oh god, and then reviewing the Kenobi episodes and staying on top of them. It took quite a lot out of me to do that there. So, it'll probably be another week or two before I post another video on my channel because, oh, I need a break. I've burnt myself out and never worked myself. Next thing you know, I'd post a video up in two days' time. I'd just see how I feel. <laughs> but I, I did enjoy that episode. Um, I don't think Vecna is truly gone though. He's definitely alive somewhere. I think he's just licking his wings. And he's gonna come back, and you know what? He's gonna be pissed. He really is. He's gonna be so pissed. That scene of Max and Lucas, wow, wow that was just, you know, like he, he really loves the girl. He cares for her. And even though she was dead, and the ground started breaking up, and he still left her body and dragged her away. Um, nobody gives a shit about Jason. I'm gonna defend Jason here, right? Everyone hates him, but see if you put yourself in his shoes, you know. I can completely understand where he's coming from. You know, he's obviously got the wrong end of the stick and may not have made the best choices, but 
the guy lost his girlfriend that he loved very much and he seemed like he's fell to begin with. So whenever he starts to see all this demonic entity shit coming out, you know, he, obviously he's, he's gonna believe, you know, that this is a cult hellfire club that's responsible for the death of his girlfriend. You know, it's completely understandable. It would say justified in what he done, but I get where he's coming from. Um, I don't think he should have been killed, you know. But yeah, he kind of he was an asshole at times. But uh, he, that that's what grief does to you. When you're grieving someone you love, you are not thinking straight. You really are not. Uh, you will be irrational, as he was. You know, if she had been alive, or if he had found out the truth sooner, uh, like if Dustin and I had told him sooner, and he had realised and said, managed to prove to him that they're not a cult and that the upside down is real. Things would probably be different. I'd say he probably would have sided along with them to help take back the down. He could have been a very, very good ally, him and his mates. But unfortunately, uh, it didn't work out that way. <clears throat> uh, I will still cover Stranger Things Season 5, any updates or any theories I have. <sighs> I'll see you guys later.